Welcome into another Oklahoma film review, a film review from Gate 49 here in Washington, D.C. at the Reagan International Airport. So apologies if you hear some background noise, but this is something I've been working on for about a week and a half at this point, and I'm very excited to share it. Uh, we're going to be taking a dive into the, the Ole Miss run game on Jeff Lebby. We've taken a look at how he operated at UCF. We've broke down Dylan Gabriel's time at UCF. We've looked at Ole Miss's intermediate passing game, the way they're able to attack the middle of the field and the outside the hashes between 10 to 20 yards. This is going to be a good one. And I hope uh, all of you learn as much as I have throughout watching these games. Again, this is my second time to go through a lot of these games. And uh, one, I want to say, too, uh, appreciate you guys and all you guys that watch these, um, that want to learn. And this this is what this is for. So I uh, hope you guys are continue to get your money's worth and uh, enjoy it and learn from it. And like I said, apologies if you guys hear some background noise. Um, there's a little coffee place that's getting set up around me right now. So the Ole Miss run game um, is really good, really innovative. I'm super excited to see what Bill Beatonbow and Jeff Levy do uh, together in the run game. I think that there's a lot of, there should be a lot of excitement about what that's going to bring. Because I think Jeff Levy, typically has answers for a four-man front, three-man front. And uh, he find, and he finds them and he goes after it and continues to go after it and does a really, 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 really good job. So let's start here in the A&M game. You're going to get two games of Ole Miss against the four-man front um, and two games against the three-man front, three games against the three-man front. But we're going to start here against Texas A&M. Uh, and I think the most important thing is this is a really, really good defensive line. So they had to be schematically excellent um, in order to win. And so I hope, um, I hope that people understand how difficult it is for them, not to say Ole Miss offensive line isn't any good, but to say that it's not nearly as talented or nearly as physical um, as some of the defensive lines that they're going after so, or they're going up against. So let's get going here in this Texas A&M game. Uh, I'm going to break down some of these plays, but if we see plays that are over and over, I'll also show those as well that work. But let's start here. Ole Miss is going to run inside zone. Um, maybe even, again, I can't tell if this is wide zone or inside zone, but this is a concept that they run quite a bit. Um, the numbers don't, Matt, don't work for Ole Miss here. Right, you've got one, two, three, four, five guys on this side. Five. So if they're going to try to run this direction, it's going to be really crowded. Um, so they need to get these guys going this way, go this way, and come inside. If they can get that, then you get the numbers game, which is why they're going to orbit motion the number three receiver and watch how old, watch how Texas A&M reacts. There you go. Now look, one, two, three, four. A lot easier to block. There's your inside zone. They get this middle linebacker to take the path of least resistance, which we talk about a lot. And Jaron Ely does a really, really good job here at the end. Had to go from that back, had to go from the full field view there just to show what the motion does and how these guys line up. Leon O'Neill misses a tackle and ends up being a really good run for Ole Miss. Same drive about six plays later. This is just normal. You guys have seen this before. This is just G, Y, or G, H counter, right? So this offense, the center is going to go there. He's going to go there. He's going to work there and then up. And then these guys are going to come around. Kick out. Get through. Right? You guys see it there it goes and they pop off a good run here counter against the four man front isn't easy really good run here and 
on the next drive for Ole Miss. This is just normal, good old split zone. Work down, work down, work down, work down, work down. And he's coming back to kick off this backside. So there's sometimes there can be a run if these both these linebackers, if they rotate this direction, running back can cut this back and there's a backside lane. And you'll see them hit it a lot. See them hit it a lot. So I want you guys to see so important here. 51 gets beat at the point of attack. So look at 51 doesn't win here. Or 51 doesn't lose. Sorry. Oh, miss center. See how he gets beat by the 92 Jade PV, good player. Gets blown off direction. If that doesn't happen, look at this run. Look at all 10 gets up in there. Linebackers taken care of. 73 and 54 are going to look for work. So what I obviously would see different, what I would want to see differently, more action here before he climbs. And if that happens, this run pops. But it doesn't, and the run does not do as much damage as it probably should have. I didn't plan on showing much red zone stuff. That's going to be a video for later on, especially when you consider that this is an offense that typically struggles in the red zone. But here's a play from this game I got to show. It's split zone. O'Neal and one both get their eyes on the split zone action, lose contain. Probably should have been a touchdown. He doesn't slip. It's probably a touchdown. They went to this run a lot in this game. So they're going to motion the receiver. He's clearly lined up behind. Look at the action from all of the players. Big run, big run. I'm going to motion across and then watch the eyes of the defense get lost. Just inside zone. Linebacker one comes up into a run fit. He doesn't know what he's going to. Linebacker two comes up to a run fit and gets stuck in the mud, stuck in the mush. Look at 45's eyes. 45 gets up in there, and he's looking over here. He doesn't know where the ball's at. Ends up breaking off a big run. It's just in, just simple, simple inside zone with motion. Really, really good run here. Play defense that's undisciplined, that doesn't play with uh, – doesn't take great coaching, whatever it may be. Doesn't take any coaching, not great coaching. And the rest is history. So guess what? They're going to come right back to it. Very next play. This happens a lot, guys. Happens a lot. They find something that's successful. They just keep going after it. Here is wide zone. Wide zone. So these guys are going to start. These guys are going to try to get as far this direction as they possibly can. Running back gets to pick his lane. If he wants to keep it outside, he can. But it's wide zone, not outside zone. Wide zone. Bill's outside zone. Sixty fourth job would be to seal eight. It's not his job here. His job is to get going and then allow the running back to pick a lane and go. A lot of motion here, right? Let's go back to this view so you can see it, why they do it. Motion it, single linebacker in the box. Turns into a good run, five on five in the box. Good numbers. Everybody gets a hat on a hat. Everything's good. Good run. Here is that play from earlier. Same thing, right? Motion, inside zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Motion. Touchdown. Linebackers, 45 and one, just come up and get hit. There is a stunt here in the middle. Red Sea opens up, and they score. 
And guess what? Very next play on the next drive. It's actually not the next, not this very, very same play. It's thinking of a different game. Anyways, split zone, as you guys can see, and it gets everybody going. Look at this. Look at the view from here. Motion the receiver over. 27 is going with him. This linebacker is going with him. He's confused. Opens up a gap in the middle of the field. And a good run from Ole Miss. This has some wide zone action to it. Which again, I think that's what this is. Wide zone with a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's split zone, wide split zone. You guys probably picked up on that before I before I did. Good run. And they'll run this, and we'll show it later on as well in this video. This will be my favorite portion of this video. They get six guys on the line, six offensive linemen on the field. Um, obviously, they're going to be on the line of scrimmage, but they're going to run just simple inside zone. But it's also Uno. We've talked about this a little bit, duo Uno concepts with zone blocking. Um, so these guys are just going to double this lineman. He's going to go here and work up. He's going to take care of him. He's going to take care of him. And then these guys are going to work this way. Now, on this play, this tight end comes inside and then comes and kick, kicks out. So the running back is reading this linebacker. If this linebacker, whichever hole he picks, you go the opposite. And boy, is this fun. 23 picks the A gap, 24 kicks it out to B. Big run on first down, back up against your own goal line. Big run. So guess what? They keep all the personnel on the field, and they run it again. 23 chooses the B gap. Running back takes the A gap. You guys see that? Everybody see that? 23 takes B. 20, the running back takes A. And another good run. Oh, but it's not done yet. We're going to do it a third time. 18 picks the A gap. Running back takes the outside lane. Three straight plays, same personnel, exact same play. Three big runs. This is fun. This is really fun. These are concepts that we saw Oklahoma run during Lincoln, Lincoln Riley's tenure, where they're going to isolate this end into the even into, even into the boundary. Pardon on the uh, background noise right now; it's pretty loud. But they're going to isolate this end, make him make a choice. Motion doesn't do that much. It's just so he can crack this linebacker. Good run. They run this a couple times in this game. It's pretty good. So you can see that action. So that wide receiver is motioning in to come get this guy. That's a horrible circle. But he's coming in to get this guy. I do like is that they got this action, a little guard power, right? A little G power as well. Which I would imagine is is that Matt Corral has a choice, right? If if zero is going to head to take the running back here, he can go ahead and fake that pitch and look at this thing inside, right? So if zero goes ahead off the snap and takes this back. If he goes this direction, Corral can probably pump it and look at what's inside. Really good play. Inside zone here on this play later on, same thing, right? Really good play. Really good patience on the running back to set these blocks up. See so how he takes this little step outside. He knows 23 is going to go with him, kicks him. Big hole. Big run. 
So this is interesting. I don't know if I've seen this before. It's just a pin pull action. They're going to block down there and they're going to block down there. Right. But the center here who's behind the goalpost is going to kick around and the tackle is going to peel around as well. So he's just going to block out there, but you got a little pin pull action um, up front. I don't know if I've seen this before, but again, this is fun. And the, with this showcases in terms of running backs vision. And it's supposed to, again, if he, the running back does what he should do on this play, this play is massive. So 18 on this play, right? The guy he's reading, see where his eyes are at? 18's flowing this way. Cut, cut this thing back. See how this one, he takes it outside? He's going with the flow. Right now, 18's making that choice. If he cuts back this direction, look at the hole that opens up. Instead, he takes it outside for a minimal gain. So what does Ole Miss do? They see this. They see that this thing opened up. So they're going to run it on the next play as well. And it's still it, – he then makes the decision in his head, I'm going to go ahead and cut this back. And 18 remembered that and said, no, you're not. He makes a good tackle. So, again, this is – I don't know if I've seen this before. I think at the NFL level, maybe it's something that Shanahan does uh, with the 49ers. But this is very innovative, really fun. And if the running back does his job on the first time, they don't have to run it the second time. So we've seen plays like this before out and about. Um, they set this up the entire game. They ran this earlier in this game, and they got a holding penalty called back on a touchdown run. But, again, this is something that you've seen Oklahoma do. You'll see te especially teams in the NFL do it more often than not. But they're just going to slip this guy out to the flat. They're going to run play action and they're going to run that outside zone this direction. He's going this way. These guys are all going out this way and this way. That's horrible, again, line there. But with him running this post, this corner is going to take that. It's going to leave no one on this backside, no one. There goes 10. Look at the flow of the defense. Everybody, his eyes are on 10. His eyes are on, everybody's going this way. And the left tackle can do just a little bit better of a job here. Nick Broker, badass player. He's going to be a guard at the NFL, and he's going to kick ass. Probably should have been a touchdown. Look at Lane Kiffin down here. Lane knows. Lane knows they had him. Look at Lane. <laughs> Probably should have been a touchdown. Go back. Let's go back to it. Let's do it from this view. Look at 18. Look at these guys. These guys are so worried about the play action. So worried. Look at 30. 30 is lost. Look at 30. 35. All of these guys are not looking at the way they're supposed to be or this direction they're supposed to be looking. Really good play here. Really, really good. Here's a new play for you guys. I don't know. I don't think we saw Oklahoma run this at all under Lincoln Riley. It's called Y insert, right? So these guys are going to try to pin this guy in. He's going to try to pin him and climb to the second level. He's going to try to pin him here. They're going to kick out, and he's going to come through and seal this thing off. Right? When you draw it up against this defense, the way they're, the way they're lined up, looks pretty good. Looks like their responsibilities are a little bit different. Um, he's just gonna he's gonna get there. He's gonna come in and kick him out, and he's supposed to seal him off. This block, this, and this. So this is what they attempt to do here. Ends up being a good run, but this is why insert is the name of it. So new concept for you guys to know. New concept for you guys to start to learn. New concept for me too. Um, I like it. It's not it's some of the, a lot of teams run it. It's not like it's new. Um, defensive tackle just kind of bitch slaps them a little bit. Good run here. Inside zone. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking. You guys see me break this down. They're going to go Uno here in the middle. 
he's supposed to climb up and get 23. He's supposed to come inside and help out with that. Um, and he's sealing him off here. That's what they're trying to do. He could be reading 11, or he could be reading this, not 11. That's 18. That's Clark. Um, the guy that's getting on some buzz at the NFL level. But it's 76 takes out 23 like he's supposed to instead of getting kind of on, unbalanced here, off balance. Plays probably a touchdown. If he kicks, if he can take care of 23, look at the thing. Look, there is no one back here. But it's just inside zone. So that one mistake right here, right here, gets a little off balance. Doesn't get them, and there's no one back here. This should have been a touchdown. Even when the linebackers don't get baited on split zone, even when it can work, this is why. Look at the – everybody, this is wide split zone too. This is why this has worked so well. See how these guys start getting, trying to get as wide as possible. Wide split zone. 18 flows too much. 75 can climb up. 75 climbs. If 51 can hang on to his guy just a little bit better, it's a touchdown. Instead, they ends up being a good gain anyways. But here's wide split zone. It is coming to Oklahoma. You guys we talked about Baylor this year. This is what they made their money with. Good play. But, again, you guys see how they're trying to take off. I mean, these guys are trying to get wide, wide, and then allow the running back to either cut inside, stay outside. He can make his choice. Um, but these guys are trying to get as wide as possible. Linebackers flow too much. 51 makes a better block, or 57, 51 makes a better block. It's a touchdown. Here we are, as like I said, you're going to get two games. You got two games against a four-man front and how Ole Miss wanted to attack them. You're actually going to get three of Ole Miss playing against a three-man front. So Oklahoma's going to be playing more of – Jeff Levy's going to go up against an, at Oklahoma. He's going to go up against way more three-man fronts, um, flyover football defense. Um, so, this would be a good gauge for how they're going to try to attack. Here you go. Here's your wide zone. You guys have seen me talk about this. So, there's only four guys in the box. One, two, three, four, right? This is the Iowa State thing. He's playing run. This guy on this side that comes in is playing run. They've actually got seven guys committed to the run game. Now, what ends up working is the left tackle can seal, seal, help seal off this edge, Right? If this left tackle can seal this thing off, there's a hole. There is a hole in the backside. But what Jaron Ely is reading is this mic. If this mic flows too far to the right, he's going to leave a backside lane, which he does. Ely takes it and gets a good run here. Wide zone. Again, coming to Oklahoma. Get it in your head. It's one of the – it's the buzzword these days. At least it was last offseason. This is a third and eight in plus territory. Mississippi State's going to show blitz on third down. They're going to get these guys in. Ole Miss doesn't care. They go wide zone. These guys bail, and there's no one in the middle of the field. No one. So third and eight, Ole Miss not scared to run the football. It's very important to know. They catch, they catch Mississippi State in a blitz or in a simulated pressure where they look like they're bringing six. They don't. They drop. Ends up becoming a good run. Here we are later on in this game. Here's wide split zone. But this is the kind of motion and stuff you see from Iowa State, right? They're going to motion this tight end in, and he's going to be coming on this backside. Let's get back to the back view. Here you go. There it is. Instead of taking this backside lane this time, right? 
Jerome Ely waits for this linebacker to keep flowing. He gets kicked. Perfect. 51-54 sealed the, the zero tech. Get him taken care of. 51 climbs to the second level. Gets the linebacker taken care of. And this is a good run. Wide split zone. Buzzwords. Buzzwords, buzz, buzzwords, buzzwords. Here it is again. Later on, they're going to motion that wide receiver in. They're going to go wide split zone. He just says, screw it. I'm taking the backside lane. He's reading these backers, right? Two and 14. These guys are going to the right. He just says, all right, I'm coming back to the left, and I'm faster than you. Wide split zone. Wide split zone. Here is Ole Miss. This is a, they old Louisville's defense played with three man principles. See most you see he's lined up riding a five, riding a five and a zero. That's three. That's three man responsibility. So pin pull action works great against it. You guys can listen, go to a coaching, listen to a coaching clinic from David Ronda about why G, um, G Y counter, why G T counter, why it's really difficult on a three man front. So um, as you guys seen it before, here it is. Ely gets to the outside on this one. This linebacker that he's reading, right? He's seeing what this guy's gonna do. He decides to take the inside route. Ely takes the outside route, turns it to a good run. Wide zone here against Louisville. See how wide they're gonna get. They leave, actually, sorry, pardon me. Midline read option old school stuff you saw from back in the day also in this offense wide zone responsibilities by every lineman besides this one he's keeping this guy's he's taking care of him they're going to leave the four eye there right here he's going to be left alone he's going to have to make a choice He chooses to stay home. Macro gives it. They seal things off and turns into a good run. Wide split zone. Wide split zone. With that, with that wide receiver motioning in. Make your choice. Number 11 decides to continue to flow to the outside. They cut it inside. And again, a good run. So what does Ole Miss do on the very next play? Not what I was expecting. They just go inside zone. And they get a good run. Inside zone. I don't know what 11's doing on this play. I'm just keep replaying it just because I don't get it. This is a run block. These guys are run blocking. Unless there's a call on that I'm unaware of. This is fun. I don't know exactly what to call this. It looks like just normal inside zone, but this looks like it's something that they do, that they added for in game, they added at halftime, um, or they added for Louisville specifically, because I this action's a little bit different. So these guys are going to climb up. And I mean, there's no one. I mean, the closest guys that can get to all this or, or this this nickel and, and this safety. And so you guys can see that from that view. There's just I don't I don't know if that was the best way to defend this, but this was an answer that Levy had against the three man front. Gy counter. GH counter, whichever it may be called, to get a guy in motion. Number nine does not, they do not get to the running back. Really pretty when counters run well. Really, really pretty. They ran it really well in this game. Regular split zone here with some motioning not 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 just regular not regular right wide split zone 25 is reading this backer this backer hesitates just a hair and he says all right i'm just gonna run and he does 
and they get good yardage. Wide split zone. Good run. This isn't necessarily a good run from Ole Miss, but I think it's something to be note to, or something to be noted. Just T power. Come him up. They're going to get him up in there. They're going to double this guy. Again, I think this is probably something that we'll see Oklahoma at least test out under Levy against these fronts. They did not double. They did not double the, the, the one tech here. I would have. I'm surprised they didn't. Right? So 55 works to the left. I think there's something. I think he has the wrong call or something's going on. Because if he works to the left, that tackle comes up and takes that back route. If that takes that back route, You've got a hole in the middle of the field, and you make you have, all you have to do is make Jalen Catalan here miss. Instead, ends up not being a bad run, but they do something like this where they double here. He goes there, and sorry for the noise coming right now. I'm gonna try to talk over it. Um, he goes that direction right to pick up that backer. He's sealing there. He's coming around and taking out 31. Free hitter is this guy, this guy. He's your free hitter, right? So I think 55 got the wrong call in. Something's going on. But there's T-Power. We've talked about this play before. It's fun. It's little. I think it's, an, again, an adjustment they made at halftime in this game. They're going to kick this guy around, right? And then they're going to kick this guy around. So you got the H and you got the you got the H and you have play side guard are both pulling. Fun play. A lot of people have talked about it over the coming day, the last couple of days. Fun run. Again, this is the only game I saw them run this in. So I think that's fascinating. I wonder if this again, I, I would imagine this is something that they get they use. I mean, you kind of have to especially when it works as well as this did against this defense, kind of have to. Here it is again, the start of the very next drive and another big run. That pin and pull action. Another good run. I wonder what they're going to run the next time. Same thing. And another pretty good run, eight, nine yards. Same thing. And the next play, split zone, touchdown, all miss. Split zone could even be labeled wide split zone, the way that this guard and this tackle is reacting. It's beautiful. I mean, this is as pretty of a run as you can, you'll find. Again, this is a play that we've talked about. I think this is the first time they ran it in this game. They pulled it out the very end. Just Y insert, right? So the Y here is going to insert in to this gap. He's kicking out. Good Lord, that's bad. He's kicking out. I believe 76, 76 should be working here. Y insert takes out 27. Because 76 is working here with the, with the double. He can climb up to that second level and get 10. Seventy-six climbs, 83 climbs, and the rest is history. The fact that the center took care of this, took care of that nose so well is pretty impressive. Why insert is the name of this concept. Why insert? G power, just regular old G power, right? Work here, work here. Climb to that second level, kick him out. 
work there, seal him, work to the backer. You do that, you're in good shape. You're in really, really good shape. That they are. Now, what I would have liked to have seen is if 20, the running back is reading this right, right? 10's coming up, 31's working over. You know your guy's picking them here. Look at the hole in the middle of the field. Man, oh, man. Probably one of the first times I've seen 24. Um, I believe his name's Snoop Connor. First time I've seen him misread something like this. This is a house call. This has been his third big touchdown run of the game. If he would have cut this up inside, it had been really, really good. But this is the Ole Miss run game. Um, it's very innovative, very effective, physical, great schemes. Um, and you guys are seeing a little bit of a uh, – you guys are seeing this thing save. Wi-Fi went out here at, at Washington Airport. It is 4.45 in the morning. It, it is late. It has been fun uh, over the last almost 24 hours now at this point. Um, but we got this done. And again, I, I want to say I appreciate everybody that still wa that watches these, um, people that give me feedback, and the people that want to learn. That's why these things are done, and we greatly, greatly appreciate you.